Hey, I'm Ron Droders from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to our journey through the real book number 251, which is the great song, My Way. As with all these um, uh, piano lessons, we're going through and learning how to play these um, tunes. I wouldn't quite call this a jazz standard, but it is a standard tune, or like a pop standard, contemporary pop standard, if, if something from the late 60s can be still called contemporary, certainly rock era. Pop, pop standard, popular standard. Uh, we're going through these standards and uh, learning how, how to uh, learn them in a, in a way that includes where they're from, a little deeper and broader perspective than um, we often take the time to do. So that's why these are the kind of lessons that I used to get like from someone like Billy Taylor where I'd ask him, like, oh, where's that song from? Or, or oh, well, you try it like this, you could try it like that. It's a little more broad perspective, and then you get into the nuts and bolts as you go along. So definitely, if you don't have a copy of the real book, this is the Hal Leonard, uh, it published 6th edition, uh, volume 1, uh, in the key of C, for C instruments like the piano, not trumpet or sax. Uh, and um, uh, my way, okay, so what's it doing in the real book? I said it's not a jazz standard, it's interesting, and I, I'm not exactly sure why it's in the real book, it wasn't in the old real books. Um, the uh, original ones that I grew up with, the uh, fifth edition, I think. Um, but it, it is a song associated with Frank Sinatra, and Sinatra did a lot of jazz standards, so maybe they just put it in here. It is a song that a lot of jazz musicians will play, so maybe that's why it's in here. Because if you're working with vocalists, they might decide to do it, or if you're crossing over into the cabaret world, or doing some pop gigs or whatever. It's, it's a wonderful song, but it, it's a pop ballad, sort of like a, like a, like a Let It Be. This is 1967, says copyright. Let It Be was around that time, maybe a year or so later, and it, it's got this sort of... late 60s, early 70s kind of uh, pop ballad, really wonderful tune. So it was written uh, as a French pop song, and then Paul Anka wrote the lyrics to, uh, to this, which, which uh, if you know the Frank Sinatra version, they're very iconic lyrics. They're about strength, and I did it my way, and I pulled through, and I persevered, very empowering. And um, Sinatra, for all his swagger and uh, sort of a bravura and bragging kind of personality, uh, at least publicly, he, um, he did a lot of self-doubts. And, uh, you know, he, people don't realize, but uh, after um, his first part of his career, where he was singing with the Tommy Dorsey band, and he sounded very different. He sounded very, you know, sort of a higher pitched, sort of a high baritone kind of, or I don't know, maybe even tenor at that time. I guess high baritone, crooning kind of voice. Uh, he was considered washed up. His career was over, and publicly, Newspaper articles were about how his career was over, finished, not popular anymore. And he, invent, he reinvented himself. He was sort of like, like the Madonna or the Justin Bieber of his day, where considered washed up and then came back with a new sound. And that's that sort of like, you know, the best is yet to come, sort of, you know, hey there, you know, uh, kind of um, uh, Rat Pack sort of personality who drive a big band and really swing, you know, fly me to the moon, th things like that. That was actually the second era of Sinatra. So go back and listen to Sinatra with Tommy Dorsey if you like. A real pleasant surprise, but this sounds very beautiful. And, and not listen too much anymore. So, uh, my way. How are we going to play this rock era, or pop kind of era uh, ballad in a way that is improvisatory or, or uh, from a jazz perspective? Well, uh, at least in my opinion, the, the, the way not to go would be to just swing it. You know, I'm not going to necessarily go... That actually sounds pretty good <laughs> instrumentally, but if you know the song and you know that era and how people would sing it, doesn't quite go. It's a little bit like that um, Saturday Night Live lounge lizard parody where the, you know, it's like, hey, how are you doing tonight? You know, which to me kind of waters down the whole jazz thing. I, I, I don't always love it when like rock musicians hear a little jazz and they might start going that over the top lounge lizard parody. I, I think it's, um, it's not really what swings about, right? It's really wonderful music. So instead of going there, I tend to um, play it 
and just bring like slightly different rhythm to it. Like, you know, like I might start out softer and bring some like 16th notes. One and two, up the other, one and two and one. the pop sensibility of the song and the rhythm sort of halfway between my world and the world of this very famous uh, and wonderful Frank Sinatra recording of the song. And then, um, yeah, we can improvise, we can bring in some jazz techniques like block chords, but instead of playing them swingy, we're playing... swingy for my taste, I was just trying to demonstrate, but basically within the context of where the music wants to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start out with this very light kind of feeling and just, just seeing where it goes and um, uh, not trying to be overtly jazzy, but coming from it from the point of view that I, I do when I play jazz, if, if that kind of makes sense. Bringing this improvisatory, um, exploratory um, uh, approach to a song, you know, after we thoroughly learn the chords and everything, um, it's not, it doesn't have a traditional form either. It's sort of got this, um, you know, it, it just starts with this beautiful verse, which lasts for 16 bars, four, five, you know, 16 bars, and then that repeats, and then it goes into, um, I don't even know if you'd call it a chorus, but da 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 I don't know. I mean, think about it. We talk about the Great American Songbook, but this was French. So it's got a little different sensibility. Sort of like Autumn Leaves has a little different form than traditional AABA. Autumn Leaves is AABC. So this comes from sort of a French, you know, cabaret or chanson type of song uh, tradition that's a little different than a lot of the other um, pop music we play. So uh, here we go. My way, and I hope this inspires you. Uh, give it a try yourself. From an improvisatory sensibility, if not a strictly swing jazz tradition.
really took us on a journey, right? It has, it has all the emotions of a great song. But again, like I was saying before, it's not a swinger and it's not really a jazz ballad. It's more like a pop kind of ballad, but we can bring that jazz sensibility to it without sort of like the deeper meaning of jazz, exploring, um, improvising, bring some jazz vocabulary in, but we're not grafting our sort of 2-5-1 voicings, rootless voicings on it necessarily, or swinging. So, um, great song. Check it out. Give it a try. Um, if you play professionally as a, as a pianist, you uh, could very often uh, encounter a vocalist who wants to do this tune, so it's good to know. And if nothing else, just listen to Sinatra do it, because it's a tour de force and just... Uh, you know, perseverance and the inner strength that, that we have to get through um, artistic or um, different difficulties we have. So thanks for joining me here. If you're interested in taking your playing to the next level, check out my video course at keyboardimprov.com. And remember, enjoy the journey and let the music flow.